Hello and welcome to another one of our videos where today we're going to be looking at um, well, what I refer to here as a formula. I hate using the word formula because really um, many times I do actually break these rules but I probably should say guideline. So uh, just to basically under, give you an understanding of that um, exercises are only one piece of the puzzle. So um, as I put here the order of the exercise is just as important as the actual choosing the exercise itself so um, because the reason that the, there's a lot of things that go wrong is that it has to do with uh, how the body um, interprets the information that it's been given so if this is where often you can we might see people use uh, a good exercise but because of how they've um, structured it in the way that they're using it uh, it actually ends up creating more problems when it was intended to actually correct them um, so I know it gets confusing, but it will make sense as we get into it. Um, so really it comes down to what we call, uh, what, or not we call, what is known as the tonic and phasic muscle system. So basically the, this is how the muscles are designed. So the muscles are not all equal in how they how uh, they're, they're make up within the nervous system and how they uh, uh, integrate together to create a, a movement pattern. Um, you can read more about this if you check out Vladimir Yonder's work. Um, there's just tons of books and information get lost in this but really all you need to know is that the tonic, tonic muscle systems are prone to tightness and shortness and the phasic system muscles are prone to weakness or inhibition so often we're talking about VMO and glutes you know when, when we're talking about knee problems so a lot of people are very aware of these muscles and sort of thinking okay I want to strengthen them which is great um, however understanding that the there's muscles opposing them um, which are these guys all through here and then understand that some of these might actually cross over hamstrings sort of fall into both sides at times for example but generally speaking a lot of them are, are going to fall into one or the other these guys are always going to be prone to inhibition and weakness so um, inhibition means that these guys are stealing their work so if you have a look on this side the hip adductors and groin rectus femoris they're your main quad muscles so they're the the lateralis and uh, as well so and the in the hip muscles here of a tfl um, piriformis muscle very common one as that's involved with all the stealing work from glutes as well so um, you can see when these guys go into overwork mode these guys have no chance to get involved so this is where i was saying before the right exercise to target them may not actually use them it may actually just use more of them so you're going to get more of what you already have um, so basically that happens when the, if there's a damage or an imbalance in the body the tonic muscles go into a hyperdrive and they just try to correct everything and that, that's just their tendency they can't help themselves they just want to do more um, unfortunately they corrupt the way you move and the way that you access you perform the the exercises that you're using so and on the flip side of that the phasic muscles pretty much just get shut down so they are very lazy um, you know and tend to uh, you know just let the tonic guys take over and do it all um, and this is where an exercise that you were using to correct it can become a huge problem as the imbalance becomes further apart um, so a good example here is say a single leg squat if your hips and adductors and it, you know the rectus femoris are not released from their chronic tension and gripping, the glutes and VMO are really going to have a very hard time actually getting involved because these guys are just going to steal their work from them. Um, so I've put here alignment's almost impossible because if they're stealing their work from them, the problem with that is that their their connection to actually move is the opposing of the glutes. Glutes are going to be external rotating, these guys are going to be internal rotating. Um, and now you're going to be falling into constant collapse and constantly creating more problems at the knee and these guys are going to fire up to try and correct it which just makes it worse and worse. Alright, so um, so the in examples of this is, uh, you know, so I put here, this is like a, a slide from earlier in the year or last year where we were talking about foot pronation, but this really could happen at the pelvis first. So this could be reverse order, one, two, three, four. Um, in, in both cases, the knee shifts inwards and you get like a problem at the knee. So then it gets caught at both ends from here and here. 
So it doesn't really matter which one starts it, they're all going to go into a method now of overdoing things. And once these guys sort of become overworking and anterior rotate fall in, we start to constantly see all these sort of things here. So poor deadlifting form, um, that's going to be a, like very much a hamstring and glute problem for this one. Um, also all of these can be a brain thing, so it might be nothing wrong with any of the joints, but just the way that you do things. Um, so poor coordination in running and cutting movements we see with ACL problems, poor squat form, so constant collapsing, so this is a tight hips uh, or adductors, maybe weak feet as well, maybe all of the above, maybe just a brain thing. And same thing here. Alright, so you can sort of see, to correct this, we can't just have a strengthening exercise. We're going to have to have a way of getting rid of the tonic guys first. So if I go back so you can see the list, identifying who are the ones that are probably stealing work and who are the ones being shut down. If I work them separately, which this would say be stretching and loosening, this would be an isolated exercise, I may not change anything. I'm going to have to do it together but I have to do it in an order and this is where the exercise order comes into it. So, so what do we do? Well the exercise is quite simple really. So firstly identify the tonic ones that are going to corrupt my movement, um, then weaken them off. Then secondly I'm going to try and align and stabilize the joint. So I'm not going to try and strengthen anything out, I'm just trying to align it. So I've, I've weakened off these guys. Now I'm sort of bringing in before I strengthen the the phasic ones, I'm just going to try and align them, which sort of is strengthening them anyway, but not with load. Then I'm going to try and learn, make them learn to move in this position, and then lastly I'm going to strengthen them. Um, some people may need a lot of time here, others may not need much time there at all, I and mean, they might spend most of their time here. So for example, um, people who are hypermobile, so on, when we assess them for flexibility problems we don't find any, yet when they stand up and try to move they look really stiff. That that's more of a stability problem than a flexibility problem. If someone's on the floor and we see that you know there's heaps of muscle and balance, they're going to need to spend a bit of time with the stretching. In both cases, we may use stretching to on some extent, um, but not to improve flexibility if you're hypermobile. Um, this one here is the key. Step three is the key to it all because that really combines these two together and sets the uh, the foundations to be able to do that. If I don't have this, there's no point doing that because all I may be doing is just strengthening a tonic muscle that puts me back into the, into pain again. All right, so so how do I weaken the tonic muscles while well, stretching, massage, mobility drills? So you know, um, foam rolling is great. Um, so I'm going to rectus femoris here, TFL, ITB, uh, maybe even piriformis through the butt. All the known areas that are going to corrupt how I move. Um, so stretching the the quads. This really weakens the stretching will really weaken it very fast. All right, so. Uh, and you might think, why do I want to weaken my quads? Well, I want to, I want to weaken through the quad and the hip, which rectus femoris is, it does both. So, um, ankle stretching. So, because I might be able to get in good squat position if I can't, if I don't have um, a good angle through here. So I might have to weaken through them. They might be just chronically tightening up. My feet may be just really weak as well. So that's where we might have to look through that. These are more of a drill where I'm doing ankle and quad at the same time. Uh, and also don't forget up above, so don't forget through the thoracic spine because that may also be contributing to problems down lower. So, um, But basically I'm just identifying all the known areas of tightness that I can, I can refer back to my list uh, and through tests and assessments. And then I say, okay, I'm weakening them first. It's the very first thing I'm going to do. All right. Um, then I'm going to try to align the knee. So I may use some isolated exercises, the clam, hip extensions and things like that. Um, very much all body weight stuff orientated. My, my goal here is just to try and after I've loosened things off, try to get things in an alignment. So body weight is great. Um, trying to do things where I'm going to need all of the, the three joints that have got to work together. So the foot, the knee and the hip. Um, and, and that's where I really need, obviously I'm going to really need to be standing up. Much easier to do this on two leg stance because the stability is not as great. So I might be doing a squat with you know adding some tubing and teaching this person how to align and getting good positions. Um, then progressing to single leg stance. So I'm I'm just sort of going from a, a transition of walking state phase into this stance. I'm not trying to strengthen. I'm just trying to get the feel of the alignment. How my foot's got to work um, to keep good stability and alignment, um, and in combination with my hip. So it's it's more of a brain thing than a, a strength thing, all right. Um, 
then I'm going to try and actually move. So then I'm, I'm really just being stationary. Now I'm going to start to try and bring in movements where I might use lunges um, coming up into single leg stance. So I'm, I'm needing sort of good hip mobility here and good glute strength and alignment on this front leg with foot stability, good body positions, a lot of things happening. All right. Um, again, the quality of is the, the emphasis here is on the quality of the movement, not strength. We're not trying to strengthen uh, truly yet. We're just trying to move. In, 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 to some degree, though, this is actually strengthening in a quite a big way. When you change how you move, is the fastest way to gain strength. But just understand, it's not with load. All right. So key patterns to do this stage are squats and deadlifts. So again, I'll be start. I'll be uh, taking up the two-legged sort of stances first, that are much simpler to obtain, uh, before working into lunges and step-ups. And these are usually quite hard for people with knee pain. Um, you know, and we see a lot of things go wrong, things that were easy here. Deadlifts are usually much easier than squats because there's less knee movement. There's a lot more knee movement, so I might go deadlift then squats. Uh, lateral lunges, obviously lateral movement is always very hard, so lateral movement being this one. And lastly, the single leg squat, because it's one that really brings up, exposes any of the problems that you may have not seen yet, will now be thrown into here. All right, so sort of how I, they're the things I want to really be looking for. And when I move into the strengthening phase, um, really this is sort of the easiest part because all the hard work's been done. So if I've spent the time developing the skills in the previous phase, uh, this will be sort of a formality. Um, Having said that, I just really need to be careful that I take my time and not rush through things. And you know, you just can't sh shortcut this. Unfortunately, you just have to. It's sort of a quite a slow process to make sure it strengthens gradually, not not too quickly. Um, and as I mentioned before, I'll, I'll probably often start with um, deadlifts before squats, just because the, the the knee movement here is quite great. So I'll, I'll build up some good strength through and positioning with the deadlift, which is a similar pattern to a squat, but without the the risk that comes with you know the problems that, that we see, um, obviously then lunges because they're they're a bit harder than squats. There's a lot more hip mobility needed and much more complicated movement. And single leg stance is much harder than lunges. Um, and also probably if you were playing sports, there would be another phase that I have here, which would be the power phase, which you're actually trying to do this at high speed. And we would use for say for cutting drills and stuff in ACL prevention programs and rehabilitation programs and all sports stuff so that would be an, an, an add-on after this strengthening phase but for most people you know, everyday joes they, it's really where they might finish um, so you know example of workout I might warm up on a bike for five to ten minutes might foam roll and complete some mobility drills first maybe a simple activation drill for my glutes to get some hip extension and then try this alignment thing um, then I might complete a couple of simple movement drills in preparation to track, tackle my strength things. So I might, uh, might practice my lateral lunge because I struggle with that the most and the single leg one because I always struggle. And in between sets I might use any one of these two and, and any other ones I might have identified that are going to stop me from doing this well. So I might even have an adductor drill in here to try and loosen that adductor that's going to work in combination with the hips. Alright, so that would be an example of a simple workout. Um, for a strength workout, I might break up my week so I don't get a, too much of an overload. I might start off the week with deadlifts, um, you know, and then some hip extensions between sets. So really good glute workout through here. Um, Wednesday, I'm going to sort of tackle the squat and the lunge. Um, obviously, a lot more quad loading, a lot more uh, challenge and difficulty. If I struggled with this, maybe even if I had fatigue, I might go back to single leg deadlifts, which just sets me up for the single leg squat which would be on the Friday, which would be the king of my workouts in combination with the lateral lunge. And that's might be how I break up the week. And as time goes on, I might end up doing two of these workouts and maybe skipping this one. And maybe the week after I might do two of them and skip the other one. But I, if I try to put them all on the same day, it'll be too much work. I sort of need to break it up. And obviously I might throw in upper body things around that, chin-ups, push-ups, a uh, lot of single cable work, you know, that's sort of um, puts my legs in positions of a lunge but without the needed strength of having to do anything. All right, so that, that's an example of how I might break up a week uh, and, and get my brain learning all these different positions and and movements so that I understand how to align my knee and not and not crank it all the time. Obviously, I might use um, a lot of isolated drills at times for foot stability. Um, some of the glute drills maybe might come in handy, even some of the abdominal work might, might come in handy um, but very much using uh, like mobilizing between sets and all of these of the known tonic areas so this is really trying to train the phasic system 
um, to strengthen but the, remember the tonic ones will rob them of work so I, in between sets I'm always adding drills for stretching or mobility of hips, quads, calves, adductors they're the ones that are they're going to ruin the movement and send me backwards alright so in summary just remember the process weaken your tonic muscles first, the line and stabilize second learn to move in a standing up pattern lastly strengthen um, use all your mobility work between sets and just continue this process until you're able to comfortably execute the movements automatically that's that's when you probably may not need to do this so much anymore and you're just pretty much here just constantly flicking between these two all the time um, yeah and do that and you should be should be right good to go now if you want any more questions a bit more detail because I've skimmed over everything um, this heaps of information if you go to our website this an hour long video you can get and, our, and a report that comes with it or you can just get the report if you want um, the video is obviously a lot better because it just gives you a, a better explanation of probably over 60 exercises I think that are included in that so um, yeah if you have any questions check us out and um, yeah and I hope this helps you out alright see you on our next video